Welcome back to another episode of the Meal Prep Perspective. Join me as I share my process to make healthy, delicious meals that aren't boring, bland, or basic, and together, let's create a healthy, vibrant life. I've been meal prepping for a decade, working as a personal trainer for over six years, and I studied public health nutrition in grad school. I love combining my health, fitness, and nutrition worlds to promote preventative health practices that can lead to improved health outcomes. Okay, enough about me. Let's get into what I'm meal prepping and the process I'm following. This week, I'm starting with some veggie prep before I get started with the rest of the cooking. I've got some green and yellow squash, red peppers, and corn on the cob. I've washed all of these, dried them off, and now I'm ready to chop them into large pieces that can be grilled easily. Once everything's cut up, I'll pass these off to my husband to grill while I continue cooking inside. Am I the only one who gets so excited to grill all of these vegetables? Well, either way, I'm passing them off to my husband. Thanks, babe. I've got my favorite grill prep container that I'll use for my chicken, and I'm seasoning these but keeping it simple with some olive oil and my favorite green goddess seasoning mix. These are also going on the grill, and that will give them flavor too. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with keeping things simple and doing a seasoning mix that you know you'll love. That's one of the best things to do when you're meal prepping is make foods that you love. And I know that I love this seasoning mix, so I know this chicken will be delicious. And the best part about meal prepping delicious things is it makes it really wonderful to eat delicious things when you're eating a meal prep meal. It's seriously such a game changer. If I was eating the most boring chicken, broccoli, and rice, I would have never been able to continue meal prepping year after year. And I really can't stress enough, you just have to find what works for you. That's really the whole heart of all of this is what works for you. If you want to cook your food fresh every single day, go for it. If you don't, then keep watching my channel because I will never be cooking and cleaning up my kitchen every single day. No way. I also think now that I know the freedom of meal prep, I'll just never be able to go back to cooking like that ever again. So these are ready. I'm going to pass them off to my husband and then I'll sanitize my counter and be on to the next task, which is some more veggie prep. Now we're chopping up onions. I'm going to chop some of these up very finely. I'm going to do a fine dice and throw them into this red bowl. And the other ones are going to end up on my sheet pan. I'm going to roast them. So I'm going to slice them a little bit thinner um, and into little kind of like strips. I'll get these all chopped up and then we'll be on to the next. Now that my onions are all chopped up, I'm going to add some drained and rinsed chickpeas right into the center of my sheet pan and I'm going to dry them off with a little paper towel. I also want to separate my onions so that they roast really nicely and that all the onions get crispy just like I want these chickpeas to get crispy too. And then I'll top them all with some olive oil, some of that green goddess seasoning mix, and we'll roast them in the oven. Mm -hmm. 
Now that the chickpeas and onions are in the oven, I'm gonna do a little bit more chopping. I'm going to very finely dice up these very large jalapenos. And because we like it spicy over here, I'm gonna leave all the seeds in and uh, just cut these up really fine. I'm going to do a really fine dice on these. These jalapenos had been in my fridge for a minute, so they needed a little TLC before I dice them up, but I'll get these diced up. I'm going to put them into my red bowl because I'm uh, going to use them alongside the onions. Okay, now that my veggies are all chopped up, I'm going to add in some feta. I am, I love this combo, the onion, the jalapeno, the feta. This is going to make the most delicious turkey burger. And since I'm also going to be using really lean turkey, uh, I love adding the feta in here to add some additional fat that'll help everything stick together. It'll help us stay full and satisfied because we've got protein, fat, and veggies are carbs. So yay, we love that. Um, and I'll do my best to break up the feta a little bit here too so that it's not in those really large chunks but leave the chunks of feta larger if you like them like that go for it i like them a little smaller so i'll do that and then once i'm happy with how that's mixed i'm going to mix together my turkey and um i always take my wedding rings off before i do this too because i will more than likely get in there with my hands and yeah just trying to keep those clean so i'll get those mixed together being really careful to not over mix those but i'll mix those into burger shapes i made my husband come in from the grill to spray my sheet pan with coconut oil spray because I was worried that they would stick to the pan <laughs> so I'll place them on here and continue making them into burger shapes <laughs> While I was making these into burgers, I realized that I didn't add salt or pepper to these. So I am adding it before they go onto the grill. I definitely would have preferred to mix both of these things in, but we are problem solving. We figured it out. These were absolutely delicious. They were honestly one of my favorite things I've made in a long time. So I'll get my counter cleaned off and then take a short little coffee and water break. Yes, I'm drinking out of my NYU Globo Public Health Alumni Cup. Thanks NYU, shout out to you and a big sip of water, and then this chef is getting back to work. If I didn't have both of these beverages, I would definitely not make it through meal prep. I drink so much water, especially while I'm really warm and cooking, and yeah, water is life. So anyway, we're out on the grill checking on my husband. Uh, he's got all the veggies grilling out there, and yes, he definitely has the proper grill uh tongs he just wasn't using them in, the, in that video so he's gonna keep going on that and i'm gonna keep going inside all right i am getting started with processing some of this garlic i'm going to be chopping this up into the tiniest 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 little mints and then i'm going to be using this scraping technique um, in order to really pulverize the garlic here do you have any guesses of what i'm doing with this garlic yet well i'm making Caesar dressing homemade from scratch. It's a lot of work, but it's absolutely worth it And this is such a good task for a day when you have some more time or you really want to take the energy time effort to make Something from scratch like this Caesar dressing because it's a lot of work But because my husband's grilling and I can keep going in here. It definitely made it feel like it wasn't uh, the biggest time consumer but it definitely took a decent amount of 
time, energy, and effort. So I added some salt uh, as I continued to pulverize my garlic here. And I'm sure that this technique has a name. I don't know it or can't remember it at the moment. So if you know it, please comment it below. Um, or if you've tried this before, let me know if you haven't too, or if you're trying it, let me know that too. <laughs> so next I got out a little tin can of anchovies. And as I was opening, I decided, you know what, let's make sure we put our apron on so I don't get any of the um, oil from the anchovies onto my shirt. I'd be sad about that. Um, so I got my apron on and then I'm gonna scrape that garlic salt mixture into my bowl uh, for the rest of my dressing. And I will very carefully remove um, and open and remove my anchovies from their little can that they're in, um, being careful not to like flip this anchovy oil all over my kitchen. That was what I was trying to avoid and be careful and slow while doing. Um, so yes, so I did that and then I'm going to chop these up really, really fine. I'm not someone who really likes to see or taste the texture of an anchovy in a Caesar dressing. So I'm going to chop these up extra, extra fine and um, almost make them into a paste. And definitely uh, looking back, if I were to do this today, I think I would probably try this with my immersion blender. I don't know. Do people do that? It seems like something that might be an easy task for this type of work. Yeah, I'm sure I could food process it too. But yep, I did it by hand because sometimes we just make things harder. And anyway, <laughs> we'll move on. So I'm going to really work to process this so it's really in like a very fine paste instead of just those little anchovy fillets. And yay, all done with my uh, anchovy paste. I've got it in my glass mixing bowl here and I'm just scraping uh, the remaining uh, bits off of my cutting board and cleaning up my counter a little bit. I made a little bit of a mess. And uh, next I'm adding in some lemon zest, absolutely essential for Caesar salad dressing if you ask me. So I'll get that lemon zest in here next. Now that my lemon is all zested, I'll go ahead and just mix these together. So I'm happy with, you know, I can kind of eyeball to see if there's enough lemon zest. Um, and next then I'll add the lemon juice of my zested lemon in here. I'll give that a stir. And then now we're gonna add some mustard in here. I'm not a huge mustard girl, honestly. If you have followed me or subscribed for a minute, you probably know that I don't really use mustard in my cooking, but I feel like mustard is absolutely essential to Caesar salad dressing. So even if you don't like mustard, just add a little bit. It'll just give that little bit of that classic Caesar taste that you'll be looking for. Trust me. The next ingredient here to add is mayonnaise and lots of it. So I add it in, stir it up, try to mix up all the lumps and bumps and get it nice and smooth. And then the next ingredient I'm adding should have been a Worcestershire sauce, but I didn't have any. So I used some coconut aminos instead. This turned out fine, but I definitely need to get some Worcestershire sauce. So now that that's all blended up, I'll add in some salt and pepper next. Now that everything's blended, I'm adding in some fun, fun time for the cheese. I've got Parmesan and Romano, and I just gently lift the bigger pieces out because I want those smaller pieces uh, in the dressing itself, and I'll save those larger pieces for later, but I'll mix that in. And then as I was mixing that in, I decided, hey, you know what? I want to make this high protein, so I'm going to add in some Greek yogurt just to take this dressing into like you know, it's like 90% mayo, <laughs> maybe more like 80, but I want to make this high protein, higher, pr higher in protein. How about that? That's probably fair. Higher in protein. So I'm going to add in some Greek yogurt. And after I did that, I knew that would probably 
call for a little bit more salt. Um, so I added some more salt in, gave it a taste, and we were in business, baby. Yay! Classic Caesar dressing with a little twist and high protein. <laughs> I'm so glad I made this. This is just such a comfort food for me. I don't know if anyone else thinks of Caesar dressing that way, but like Caesar salad just really makes me so happy. I added some of the dressing in and I kind of painted the bottom of my bowl with it. I'd also on the side had made some uh, pasta. It did get a little stuck in the colander, so it was uh, a little challenging to get it out, but I added that in, added the dressing in and kind of wanting to mix it in as I went. It just knew it would be easier in this giant bowl to do it in sections versus trying to add it all in and then make it happen. So now that I've got all my pasta, all my dressing mixed in, wow, I took a little, you know, taste. Oh my gosh, so delicious. I cannot tell you how much you need to make this, especially I think adding that little bit of Greek yogurt in really made all the difference in making it even creamier. So I added in a package of pre-cooked edamame and I'll mix that in here. And then I also defrosted some peas and put that in as well. And my roasted onions and chickpeas are cooled off from their out of the oven. They roasted up so perfectly and I'm just going to separate my onions from the chickpeas because I'm going to put the onion into the bowl and use the chickpeas as a topping. So I'll just separate those and mix those uh, onions in. I'm adding in those defrosted peas and I'll mix them in well. I love the pop of green they add to this. Look at that beautiful color. I'm not quite ready to put this into my containers yet, so I am going to put it into my fridge, but yay, so delicious. And now I'm going to start on breakfast. I'm making pineapple upside down cake overnight oats. I know, how delicious does that sound? So I'm starting with some frozen uh, pineapple, I defrosted, and I'm gonna blend it in my blender. There's plenty of pineapple juice with this too, so I'm not gonna add anything else for now, just the pineapple, and um, then we'll get some oats in here, and we'll add some pineapple in. But before we add the pineapple in, we're gonna add just a little splash of milk. This is not gonna be a ton of milk, because I'm gonna add this pineapple, and it's liquidy, so I wanted to just add just a little bit, so I'll add the milk milk in, stir it up, and then I'll kind of be able to assess how much more liquid I need to add after I add the pineapple in. I'm going to add one more little splash of milk here because remember when I make overnight oats, we want our oats to be swimming in the liquid so they have plenty to absorb and they're not dry and flavorless. Now I'm going to add this tart cherry, I guess it's preserves, um, on top. It's really good. It doesn't have a ton of sugar added into it. I know a lot of times jams and jellies can have a lot of sugar, but this one's quite nice and has that really nice tart cherry flavor. I'll also show you how I serve these. I added in some Greek yogurt, kind of lined the side, and then I mixed it up off camera, but this was so delicious and a really nice way to add in some more protein. I ate this in the morning uh, before I played tennis and this was the perfect pre-workout for me. And that's probably a great time to ask if y'all have any pre post-workout nutrition questions, please comment below, ask them. I'd be happy to answer them or discuss or just talk a little bit more about pre post-workout nutrition. What I'm working on the video is just getting the rest of these um, all set and I'll specifically highlight, you can see one of these that I just didn't add enough milk to. So that's what I'm talking about when I'm saying like, that's not enough liquid. These need to be swimming. So just for some context. Okay. Yay. Those are all set. They're looking great. And we're on to the next task. I've got all my veggies in from the grill now. Yay. For that, I'm going to get these um, portioned out into our containers.
And now it's time to get my pasta salad added into my lunch containers. I'm gonna add in that last little bit of dressing here and uh, mix that up really well. Then I'll portion it out and we're almost done. I'll add some of the reserved shredded cheese I had from earlier on top and also some of those chickpeas. Oh my goodness, delicious. And that meal's almost done, it's just missing our protein. And here we go, here's our protein off the grill. It's cooled, it's sliced, it's going into our containers with our Caesar pasta salad and absolutely delicious. Next coming off the grill are those jalapeno and feta turkey burgers. I also had my husband melt some pepper jack cheese on top and these were honestly so, so, so good. I'll show you how I serve them too. I added some jalapeno ketchup onto my whole wheat bun. Then I added some of my red peppers on top of the ketchup. I stacked my burger on and then I really wanted to add some other crunchy veggies. So I added some fresh baby arugula and this was absolutely divine. Oh my gosh, I wish I could eat this right now. It was so, so delicious. You definitely should do a version of these. <laughs> I wanted to call out this marketing tactic I noticed while in Trader Joe's. These multigrain slims are obviously supposed to be the healthy choice because they use the word slim in the name, but the traditional hamburger bun on the right they sell is also whole wheat and almost identical to the slims in the calories, carbs, protein, fats, and fiber. So either choice is great. I went with the classic bun and really enjoyed it and just wanted you to see a firsthand example of food marketing at work. I'm so interested to know if you've seen any of these examples or things that are similar out in grocery stores, marketing and things like that. Where are you seeing this? I'm seeing it everywhere. Okay, seriously, so good. I can taste the jalapeno, the onions, the feta. I even got a pepper or a, I even got some squash in here too. Oh, so good, so good. So good. Wow. <laughs> An unexpected benefit was that my cheese from my burger melted onto my veggies, so even better. <laughs> And on that note, we're calling it a wrap. Yay, we did another week of meal prep that we're gonna thank ourselves for later. We've got nutritious, delicious meals ready for ourselves all week. Thanks for tuning in to another week of my meal prep perspective. Don't forget to hit subscribe and leave me a comment with your meal prep questions. I'll always reply. See you next time, bye.